everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of our project today. So let's get started. All right, guys, it is time to play with a new color palette. So I have discovered that the ones that have the craziest colors that I've done have been like my most favorite so far. <laughs> so now I'm like, let's pull another crazy color palette that I definitely never would have picked. And look how pretty this one is. It's like the fall leaves, maybe early in the morning with the sun kind of coming in. The colors are kind of soft. It's very pretty and lovely. And I don't really have any colors that match it like a hundred percent but i got really really close i thought we'd play in some watercolor and gouache today so i've got some holbein gouache and i pulled cadmium red deep because that looks like a really pretty red and i pulled pyrrole orange which may be a little brighter than that pretty salmon color but i didn't have the exact color and I could mix some colors together to get closer if I wanted. I also pulled some Holbein Gouache Gardenia Yellow, GG824. This one was G505. This one's G812 in the Pale Coral for this pretty pale color. And then I thought for this really pretty yummy lavender color, we could try this Iridescent Ruby, which is a Daniel Smith color. So this Pyro Orange is also Daniel Smith. And I'm just playing with colors that I've actually i don't think ever put together in any way at all and some of these i've never even used um so i just thought woo, look at that red i just thought let's play because you know i discover the best stuff when i play <laughs> some of these things have just been crazy but man they've been amazing like amazing okay so i'm putting down the little gouaches first Oh yeah, those are crazy, crazy. Oh, such bright loveliness though. We're just going to see what we get. <laughs> oh, so this iridescent ruby is so pretty on there. All right, so let's go ahead. I've got a piece of Arches Cold Press white 140 pound paper. And I think I'm just going to tape these off and make a little set of six because that's what I like to play in. And this color palette is number 140 from Color Cube Deck 1 by Sarah Renee Clark. And then make sure you check the description of the video. I always put the supplies and links below the, the video for you so that you can check out what I'm using. And I usually have this tape down, but several people are like, let us watch you tape it down. So I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> I'm not real exact. I don't do anything special. I don't really even measure it off any more than just to kind of get an idea of where the center might be. But other than that, I just eyeball it and just go for it. Because really, these are... These, are, these don't have to be exacty. Exact. What am I sticking to? I'm sticking to something over here. These don't have to be perfect. I'm not looking for perfect. I'm just looking to play. And if I create something amazing, then that's a bonus. So let's do like a little set of six today. And let's just see what we can make today. Oh yeah, so you can see those are not exact at all, but it's close enough. It will get us started. And we could start if we wanted to with some type of mark making, um, which I actually generally like to do. Um, and you can do that with pastels. You can do it with a piece of graphite, which I actually like doing that mostly with uh, graphite. You learn to kind of dis discover like what can you put on top of what else because if you started this with say the crayons or the pastels you really need them to be something like the neo color 2 pastels because um, they're water soluble and at least then anything you put on top of it would still go on top of it but if you started off with say like oil pastels you know nothing you put on top of that is going to stick so you have to be thoughtful 
about the colors and the, the types of products that you're using and piling on top of each other. Okay, so I'm gonna start off here with a gouache. Let's see, let's start off with this pale coral. And you know, gouache is kind of like watercolor, but it's a different, it's got more pigment and it's very matte and it lays down much thicker than watercolor. You can add more and more water to it to make it nice and thick, uh, nice and thin and kind of transparent. And this is a, another one where we could definitely play with transparency. How thick and thin can we get these to see you know, what transparency can do for us in a composition and to play. So we're just gonna start laying these down. And if you've got a color that you don't love in your palette, try to at least do a dot of it somewhere. Like rather than saying, oh, I don't like this color, I'm not gonna use it, try to use it last and use just a tiny bit of it. Use the colors that you're like, oh, I like all these. Use those first and then save the, the least favorite, which for me probably is that yellow. <laughs> <laughs> just not I like the uh, the yellows that are warmer and they're not so lemony and bright so I didn't go with the lemon yellow gouache I went with the uh, other color whatever I said that was what was that the gardenia yellow gouache because it was a softer less in your face yellow all right let's go with some of this red let's just whoa look at that and we could come back on each of these like I could work each one separately I don't have to work them all six at the same time but I kind of like building each one and discovering something and being like oh look what that happened there let's see on the next one what that's gonna do on the next one so I like building all six at the same time usually the first one might be my test and what I'm discovering things on and then as I'm going they get better and better but I don't know sometimes you get surprised and the very first one you did is your favorite and if you're playing in opacities then definitely vary the thicknesses and the water amount that you're putting in these especially with the gouache because um, then you'll have some really solid areas and some really transparent areas. That's always fun. And I'm just putting these on with my Raphael Zero Soft Aqua Quill Brush. This is my favorite brush. I like these little quill brushes. I think I just spread red everywhere. <laughs> and then on top of these oh my gosh I don't know if you can see this oh look what this is doing right here holy moly this one look at this it's kind of spider webbing into the other color how cool does that look <laughs> I love watching paint blend and merge and kind of do its thing let's go in with some Daniel Smith this orange one and just see and I'm gonna do some that are nice and thick and some that are nice and thin, but the Daniel Smith is going to look completely different even on the thick areas than this gouache did. So that's going to be a fun contrast um, as it dries. You'll definitely be able to see some, maybe some differences there, which is kind of the purpose of playing with the two materials together. I love doing that. I love mixing gouache, watercolor, acrylic, oil pastels, soft pastels. I mean, I've really turned into like a truly mixed media fan. Like I love mixing all the medias. It doesn't have to be all watercolor, all gouache, all acrylic. I like mixing all this stuff up and man, the stuff we come up with is crazy cool. Oh, let's come over here. You see, I'm still kind of avoiding <laughs> that yellow. <laughs> All right, so this one's not, not going to be thick and solid at all. This one's definitely transparent. This is that iridescent color. So we might just kind of, you know, tap it around in some of these other white areas that might show up some for us in some of these areas. So what I might do, because I was just talking about mixing our mediums, what I might do is 
use uh, some, maybe I'll have an oil pastel in the right color. All right, I just kind of covered all our spots, but that's okay. We're still gonna tap some yellow in here somehow. Ooh, look at that. Okay, now that I've saved it for last and I'm tapping it in, kind of digging it over here. So see, this is exactly why I don't want you to skip a color completely, even if it's not your favorite, because the way that it starts to blend and mesh with the colors around it might pleasantly surprise you, and you might go, whoa, totally did not expect that. Now, it, now I don't hate that color. Because that's happened to me a bunch. I've done that and then thought, wow, totally changed it. It blends with other things. Maybe it, it doesn't stay the color you thought it was and it changes into something quite lovely with what it mixes around with. Oh, I just love that discovery time. And you'll notice these are still kind of transparent enough, even though that gouache is more solid, it's still transparent enough that we see all the pencil mark underneath every single thing I've painted, which that's kind of interesting to observe that. So none of this is as thick as an acrylic paint. That's kind of my point there. And we could come with acrylic on top of this. If you start going and you're like, oh, I'm inspired to do whatever it is that comes to you, go for it. All right, so I think I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna evaluate what we wanna put on top of these. So I will be right back. All right, these have dried up really nicely. And I have, I'm obsessed with the drawing with little circles and stuff in acrylic paint. So I've got um, some acrylic artist loft paint in terracotta, which is kind of like the lightest color on here. Maybe a shade different, but it's really close. And then I've got some Blick Matte Paint in Orange Deep. And then I like to circle these little circles with oil pastel. It all of a sudden is like one of my favorite mark making things is to just do some mark making with acrylic. It doesn't have to be circles. You could do other shapes. I just happen to love the round circles and these are easy to make with this Princeton Select Round Blender Brush. It's a number six and it really is like a drawing tool um, in my hand with the acrylic paint. Making some circles, you could do lines, you could do dashes, but I'm kind of feeling I'm in my circle phase. And so I just wanna play and add some marks at this point really. But I'm gonna start with some acrylic paint and favorite mark making. Whatever that favorite mark making is for you, do that. Figure out, and how do you figure that out? You, you paint and practice and play a lot. This is why I love to play on these videos and just bring you along on a play session because I don't think people play enough. I don't think as artists we're taught to play an experiment or if you're just learning you're always watching artists who are already you know very far along in their game of creating things and you feel like oh I need to be right there and how did they get there well at some point they had to learn how to experiment and play and figure out what they like and maybe for some that was when they were children um, but some of us come to come back to art later in life, like I did art in all of school and in college, along with the, the design and drafting work, I took art classes. And, you know, they teach you the basics, how to draw and how to look and see and art history and stuff like that. Did they, any of them really talk about play and discovery? Not really, not that I remember, not enough that it, obviously didn't make an impression if they did talk about it and this is really how you get there how you figure things out okay so I'm liking those and we could let's just try this with this peachy color what else could we do maybe we could do some lines or different shapes Ooh, see look at that 
You may have a different brush that's your favorite for drawing lines and shapes and dots or what have you. Pick whatever is your favorite. And if you don't know what that is, play with a little bit of everything and then be like, oh, this is the one I like. Okay, so I'm loving, loving this little bit of stripe. And I could do this with a square brush. That would have been a good choice. It's all about just play and being like, oh, what if I did this? Or, ooh, look what I discovered. This would be the perfect time if you're inspired to do botanical drawings and stuff like that. Botanical work on top of that would be crazy good. All right, now I'm kind of thinking, like, what do I have over here that is this yummy purpley color? There's several in here that are kind of lavender that are real pretty. Like, is this one too dark? It's pretty dark. I almost want it to be a shade lighter. Maybe this one. This is my own personal preference, but man, I like it when the color has a really cool contrasty color on the outside of it, which is why I circle these circles in another color. It's just so cool. <laughs> I'm sure I'll wear out of this little phase. If I stop painting for a week or so, like I get ahead on my videos and I stop painting for a week or two, I come back with a totally different perspective every single time. And then the next set of whatever's is completely different. I had somebody mention on one of the videos this week that some of these had gotten really a whole lot busier than some of my other YouTube videos. And I'm like, I know, right? I go through little phases where I get really minimalist or I get really maximalist. <laughs> and then I'll go and come back and be right back in like a different little phase again and want to explore a different tool or a different style. And I love that. I love that play and exploring. And I want you guys to start learning to play and exploring. Well, this is a fun color. Let's do this. So the videos that I make this year, probably going to be totally different than the videos that I make next year and the year after. We're just going to have a big hodgepodge collection of interesting whatever I happened to, whatever rabbit hole I went down. <laughs> <laughs> and really your art journey should be the same you should be growing and evolving and figuring out where you want to go and do next okay i like the dashes rather than the circles on that one and then we can look at it and say do we need any stencils so that's another thing too. I never ever used stencils until this year. I mean, I had them, but uh, it wasn't something that I used hardly ever. Um, I had them from like my scrapbook in time is kind of where that was going. Mm -hmm. Thinking, do I want this bright orange and a little bit of some decoration in there. Let's see, is this too bright? Let's just look at that picture. Oh, I haven't opened this orange one. Let's see. Ooh, that is too bright. That's like neon orange. Okay, let's look a little further. What else do we got over here? Got a pretty mineral pink. That's kind of blah. Got a pretty gold yellow. Cause see, this is very leafy and what about this orange here this is a mars pale yellow Ooh, do we like that let's do that okay so this is an acrylic paint by arteza indian yellow and i feel like it kind of fits in with our very fall color palette here and I don't remember what this stencil is, but if I can find it, I'll link it. And if I can't, go look and find stencils that you love. Something that can be some of your favorite stuff. And just experiment and explore. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is actually very interesting. 
This is a like a twall pattern or a damask. This is a damask. Oh, which is really pretty. Oh yeah, see look how pretty that is. It's kind of crazy, but now I have discovered doing these color palette challenges that the craziest ones are kind of my favorite. Let's put a little more paint out. What I just do with that paint, there it is. Yeah, these ones that are like really crazy, I have just been like, wow, that could really be like the real me. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be brave. It's just paint. It's just paper. And then what have you got to lose? You can discover things about yourself that you're like, well, I didn't even know that was in there. <laughs> Definitely the moments right here to be brave. The only paint that you're wasting is the paint that you never use. It's still in the container that you let dry up and, and ruin. That's the only paint that you're wasting. And we can always cut it up if we don't love it. See all these little mechanisms. Look how pretty that is. Pa ha ha. Okay, I'm loving that. That's, that's a damask stencil, but I'll, I'll try to find a link. Um, I like that. It is so delightfully lovely. Okay, do we need anything else on top of this? Let's just think for a moment, because I do like to kind of decorate. Ooh, let's just do some dots. I do like white Posca dots in here. And we could, you know, you could go with some bling bling if you're feeling blingy blingy. And two, you know, that's why I stop for, like, I'll get ahead on videos. I'll be painting in the same little style for a bit. And then I'll take a break. I'll get ahead and then I'll take a break for a while, a week or two, depending on just if I'm burned out or whatever. And I'll do something else for a bit and then I'll come back and then you'll see different things. Because actually when I'm painting almost every day, which I usually am when I'm recording for, you know, you guys or for Skillshare or for Made TV, um, I'll kind of get into like a painterly rut. Like I'll get stuck in one style. And if I will take a break, it kind of clears the mind and lets me do like a little refresh, a little restart. And then I can come back and start again and be like, oh, where do I want to go now? Like it just kind of frees up my mind of wherever I was getting stuck. And then I binge watch some TV. I like watching mystery shows. Some of my favorite shows were like Bones, NCIS. I liked almost all of those. The original and the Hawaii have been my favorite. Not, for some reason, I didn't love the Los Angeles one. I didn't like that one at all. I didn't watch hardly any of those. And I didn't love the New Orleans one, but I did watch them all. But the Hawaii, oh, love that. Oh, I saw they're coming out with an Australian one. I'm actually looking forward to that one. <laughs> yeah, and so I loved that. I love those. And then I like Bones. That was one of my favorite shows. House, Numbers, The Mentalist. White Collar. Oh, loved White Collar. That was a good one. Never really got into the Law and Orders. I didn't like the choppy pace of those. Elementary. Oh, I loved Elementary. I'm still sad that that one went off. Okay, these are these are pretty bright and crazy and fun. And I'm in my little crazy color palette phase. Let's pull some tape and see what we got. Oh, look at these. Yum, yum. And I'm using artist tape and the artist tape on this cotton paper just comes off so beautifully and it usually gives you really sharp crisp lines uh, because it was formulated to work with wet mediums like um, watercolor and stuff whereas if you're using something like a washi tape which I know a lot of people use 
Um, it doesn't really stick and give you fine as fine a lines a lot of times. So that's why I don't use washi tape. Besides, the washi tape is so pretty that I almost feel like I'm ruining it if I paint all over it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've gotten to where I really like painter's tape and artist tape. Look at these. These are so bright. Kind of wild. And I'm going to cut these up and see what we got. It's my Fiskars paper cutter. Somebody always asks, what is this? <laughs> All right. Whoa. Look how bright and pretty these are. This was a bright, happy day. And look at that with our color palette card. How do we do? So a couple of these I like love, love. Like I love this where it's kind of going down. When you're looking at compositions now, I like the movement as it's going through. I really love this one. This might be my favorite. I like that this kind of is sitting to the side. I like how the damask stencil kind of came in from this direction. And another thing that I really started really liking to do is taking um, a little bit of oil pastel in like a contrasty color um, and doing a little mark making on top of the stencil to almost make it three-dimensional so you could come back and just add that little extra mark on the marks that are already there and it just makes it look less like a stencil and more like something that you've painted and that has some dimension and it all of a sudden turns into so much more I like the little extra artist touches that we can start doing as we think of them when we're creating like this. So it's not something that's going to be super obvious. If you look at it from the side though, you'll be able to see that there's a little bit of extra dimension in a piece when you do something like that. So it's not like I'm trying to like suck you in the face, be obvious, but I am trying to add something extra that's like, oh, it's not just a stencil. And I love that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to say that's probably my favorite at first glance here. Oh, no, maybe I like this one too. So these two, I would maybe come back with a couple finishing touches. You know, I did little marks on the flower stencils and that's when I'm like, oh, look how much better those look with the extra little mark making in that stencil work. It just turns it into so much more than a little bit of paint that you slopped on there. Okay, so these two are my very favorite today. So just a couple favorites make every day a good paint day. I hope you enjoyed this color palette challenge. I can't wait to see what you do with these, card 140. And I'll see you next time. And if you want to show me what you're working on, definitely tag me on Instagram at Two Little Owls Art. And you can join the Facebook group I have for Art Peeps. I'll link everything below in the video. And if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.